Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Dunn, and I own the insurance vertical here at FIS. I take a broad view of the insurance industry and the wide array of solution sets that FIS has to offer. I work with our clients at many different levels uh, to understand what FIS can bring to the table. Today, we're going to talk about the modern insurance landscape. We'll discuss what disruptions, trends, and technological innovations we're seeing in insurance and how the sector is being affected by today's volatile macroeconomic conditions and more. More specifically, we'll also look at what's happening in the payment space for insurers. New customer expectations and more competitive market make payments a big priority for insurers and the lifeblood of every insurance business. Not only do firms rely heavily on premium collections for cash flow, but prompt and flexible payouts in the appropriate channels are increasingly critical for a superior customer experience. So we'll be addressing how innovative digital payment processes can help on both counts. To discuss all this and more, we brought together two industry experts who I'll let introduce themselves. First, we'll start with Thomas Jerilich. Thomas? Well, Nick, thank you so much for, for the invitation and for, for, for being able to be here today. Um, look, just a brief introduction at FIS. I'm responsible for our enterprise treasury and payments uh, business line. Within the business line, we, we provide solutions empowering uh, treasury uh, treasuries of insurance companies. We provide payment solutions, helping organizations streamline their claim payment, corporate payment, etc., as well as uh, collection uh, workflows. Um, I've been in the in the industry in that space for for the past sixteen years, and as I said, excited to be here today. Excellent. Thank you, Thomas. Matteo, could you introduce yourself too? Hi, Nick. Thanks for having me with Thomas uh, today. Uh, I'm the founder and director of the IoT Insurance Observatory, a think tank that has aggregated uh, almost 70 insurers uh, between Europe and North America, uh, discussing a profitable usage uh, of IoT data. I'm uh, the co-founder of a special purpose acquisition company that acquired a carrier a few years ago, and we just did our exit, uh, generating 120% return to the investor in the SPAC. Uh, I advised. Uh, insurers, reinsurers, and tech players on the insurance innovation for almost uh, 20 years. So I'm an insurance guy, but I tend uh, to work uh, with the soul of the innovation unit. Thank you so much, Matteo. So I'm really excited to have two insurance industry experts to discuss all of our topics today. To begin, I'd like to think very broadly about innovation, where the foot always seems to be on the gas pedal. I'll start with you, Thomas. How do you see insurance companies adapting to the always accelerating pace of change? All right, Nick. Well, it's an interesting topic, right? Uh, I will probably start by really highlighting how much the pace of innovation has accelerated over the past three years, in particular since COVID. Um, COVID forced many organizations, uh, insurance companies, tech players to really kind of seek out new ways of innovating, seek out new routes uh, to, to, to connect, uh, to, uh, you know, to ultimately do business with their customers, thereby really kind of pushing the uh, technology space forward, uh, accelerating insurance, uh, sorry, accelerating innovation here. Um, you know, I think for, for insurance companies, the, their technology journey very often started you know, 30 years ago, or maybe even longer, so if you think about, uh, about it, many insurance companies really were among the first to, to, to invest and really utilize technology on a larger scale. So I do think from that perspective, in particular in the insurance space across many organizations, there is more work to do to really establish an infrastructure that allows insurance companies to efficiently embark and adopt innovations out there in the market space and deliver them to, to their customers. So, you know, certainly kind of a lot going on. Uh, and I think a lot, a lot to look at and a lot to consider for insurance companies in order to, to keep up with, uh, with the innovation. Interesting. So, Matteo, uh, is it your experience that many insurers are adopting innovation as fast as other industries or maybe a little more resistant, you know, running legacy back office systems or adopting the latest and greatest in insure tech? Uh, what have you seen? So we cannot deny that uh, the reputation of the insurance sector about innovation is not brilliant. Uh, 
the insurance sector is uh, frequently considered uh, uh, beyond, beyond other sectors uh, when we talk about uh, transforming, uh, we talk about adoption of new approaches. So this is uh, partially true. Uh, there are many insurers uh, that uh, are uh, resistant to change. Uh, there are many insurers that have, uh, uh, as Thomas mentioned, uh, all the legacy systems. However, in the insurance sector, we have also best practices. There are uh, insurers, and we have examples in any market, in any business line, that uh, have uh, innovated uh, their approach, that have been able to achieve uh, results uh, thanks to their culture of innovation. Mm -hmm. um, interesting papers published over the past 18 months demonstrated the reason why insurers should innovate. So there is a paper from I'm Best that is focused on property and casualty carriers and a paper from Accord uh, that both with slightly different perspectives about uh, the level of innovation or uh, the level of digitalization identified uh, the same correlations. The higher the innovation, the higher the growth of the top line and the level of profitability. So the players that are per performing better in their digital journey are players that are achieving uh, a better growth and a better profitability. Um, talking about innovation, I would like to quickly share uh, one key trend that uh, I think uh, is uh, the perfect archetype uh, about uh, identifying a vision and then uh, concretely executing it uh, uh, market by market, business line by business line. So some insurers a few years ago started to invest uh, in risk prevention, uh, mm -hmm. both uh, providing real-time IoT-based solutions to their policyholders or uh, introducing behavioral change programs to promote uh, better uh, uh, driving behaviors, to promote healthier lifestyle, and so on. So this is a clear example where uh, something that uh, is uh, providing uh, a benefit for the policyholder that is generating a, a concrete uh, impact uh, on the insurer PNL uh, is also generating a positive externality to the society. So the players that uh, achieved uh, uh, results uh, in this direction for sure built uh, a relevant competitive advantage. Thank you. No, that's interesting. Um, I want to step back and I want to talk a little bit about that specific comment you made around the interlink between innovation and profitability. Uh, I'll turn to you, Thomas, specifically in the insurance treasury sector. Is this a financial impact that you've noticed too? A strong correlation between the pace of innovation and the profitability of an insurer? All right, uh, Nick, I mean, first of all, let me say, uh, I find it amazing that actually there's a paper out there in the insurance space really looking at uh, innovation and profitability, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I can't offer a paper here on my end, but <laughs> I, well, what I hear from Matteo, 100%, I, 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 absolutely, I, I would, my perception is I, I, uh, that I would very much agree with it. And I, I think there are, there are two factors to consider with regard to innovation and with regard to technology. Um, first, really, is the, um, I would say, the customer interface. Um, I think technology and innovation give many companies, in particular insurance companies, great opportunities to connect with their customers in a more efficient and much, much broader way than, you know, traditional channels. And I'm not saying, you know what, just go replace all traditional channels with, uh, with an electronic or digitization, but I think it is an excellent supplement to, to, to connect and interact with the customer. They are by positively impacting profitability. The better you interact, the more customer engagement we have, the more you know, business you do, right? Not rocket science. Secondly, 
um, I would want to go down the route of uh, efficiency, right? Operating efficiently. Um, technology is a, and uh, technology and innovation are, you know, enablers really for organizations to be able to harvest efficiency, right? Um, in, in treasury and payments, which is obviously the area that I'm in, right? I would even take it further and say, you know what? Technology is a necessity for an organization to really control their top line and securely and predictively manage the top line growth. Think about you know, foreign exchange volatility. Think about the impact that rising interest have on the valuation of financial assets. So technology here is a necessity to just provide that consistency and predictability um, for many organizations that uh, you know, operate in, in those areas. Oh, well, yeah, no, thank you. I actually found that paper very interesting. I think I'll have to track that down after. So I want to transition a little bit here and talk a little bit more broadly about, I'm sorry, talk a little bit more about the future of the insurance industry and what we think insurers can or should do next. So I want to talk a little bit about recent market volatility, and I'll turn to you, Matteo, here. What specific steps do you expect to see insurers taking in the next five or so years in order to manage what we've seen in markets recently? Five years, an ambitious target uh, <laughs> for a discussion. No one has a crystal ball. However, uh, when you mention volatility, in this uh, moment, uh, the first thought for me is uh, the example of... Uh, the inflation. This has been uh, uh, one of the most relevant changes uh, in uh, some business line uh, as uh, property and casualty. We have uh, seen and insurers had to manage uh, over the past uh, 18 months. Um, this uh, scenario insurers went through, mm -hmm. demonstrated that uh, processes, tools uh, um, that uh, were good enough in uh, a moment of peace uh, doesn't work anymore uh, when uh, you have a stressed scenario. Um, we see in a market as US uh, on uh, personal auto, on homeowner insurance, uh, the combination of uh, the inflation uh, of uh, a regulation that require to look uh, on the past data to request uh, changes in the rate uh, and uh, some in some states commissioners that take 200 days to approve uh, a rate uh, that generate a really dangerous uh, scenario for uh, an insurer. So, the combined ratio of personal auto and the monetary insurer in the US in this moment is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I discussed uh, a few days ago with uh, some uh, South American insurer I'm advising uh, that are used to deal with uh, uh, double digit inflation. And uh, they have uh, policies and systems uh, to manage these policies that uh, have the value of an asset that is indexed to the evolution of the value of this asset mm -hmm. because they are used to deal with inflation. So this is a one simple example on one single use case, but uh, that highlight how um, to have processes, technologies uh, that uh, will allow the, the flexibility and the readiness to deal with unexpected market conditions uh, will be more and more necessary for an insurer. Yeah, Thomas, um, from the treasury perspective, uh, how do you see insurers managing, managing these types of volatility? Um, let me maybe pick up a little bit on, on what yeah. Matteo said before, right? And I think Matteo was an interesting perspective, right? And, you know, kind of interesting to think about it, right? I mean, we very often, I think we look at inflation, well, this is this new thing, right? This, this, this new normal or whatever we want to call it. But in reality, right, there are geographies out there who have been dealing with consistent, 
high inflation, even double digit inflation over the past so many years. So I think it's actually, you know, I'm not sure how you feel about it, Matteo, but I think it's, you know, maybe this is where we got to look, right? This is where we got to look how those organizations have actually managed and navigated in that type of macroeconomic environment. All right, Nick, but not ignoring your question here, I'll, I'll get back to the, <laughs> yeah, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the treasury part of it. Look, you know, maybe really I should say treasury and payments part. So the way how I look at it, right? So we've got, you know, two streams or two factors here. Um, you know, starting with uh, inflation as, let's say, the key macroeconomic component that drives a customer behavior. So let me linger here a little bit with customer behavior. Uh, customer behavior really in that way that you know, people don't have that much money in their pocket, right? If things cost 20% more than it did, you know, two years ago, um, that impacts every one of us, right? Probably many of you guys out there listening to us. So that impacts customer behavior, you know, where individuals get more cost conscious. And this is why many organizations in the insurance space look at opportunities to drive efficiencies, right? So this is where, you know, maybe a centralized payment platform can add a lot of value as it helps an organization reduce their cost um, around managing large number of payments or more efficiently managing, you know, uh, premium payments inflows to the organization. So they are clearly in the area of opportunity. At the same time, you know, that platform may help really kind of you know, paying customers, uh, you know, in, 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 in real time at no cost to, to, to the insurance carrier. Um, again, you know, driving benefits to the customer as well as driving, you know, efficiency gains and cost savings on the side of the organization. So that's one area really around, you know, customer behavior, customer behavior necessitating uh, efficiency gains on the side of an organization to stay competitive. Secondly, you know, let's look at uh, inflation and macroeconomics impacting impacting other financial variables. And I think the three key ones to call out here, well, actually four, right? Uh, foreign exchange, interest rates, commodity, and credit, right? I mean, credit has been particularly prominent just looking back a, a few months here with some of the events in the banking space, right? And, and this is where the treasury organization of an insurance company comes in. It's, it is their responsibility to manage and their portfolio in the light of those uh, financial factors and, and, and financial volatility. So that means, you know, if I'm operating in a territory outside of my functional currency, if I'm an insurance area out of Europe, I operate out of Asia, well, I may need to manage the, you know, currency flow. I mean, my, my need to able to be predict that currency flow that comes in in foreign currency, but need to be able to reliably predict it in my home, in my functional currency. I may need to manage the valuation the volatility of assets that are sensitive to, to interest rates um, and so on and so forth, right? So this is really where, where, where treasury and treasury technology, my opinion, right? Um, it, it's an absolute must for any organization to be able to provide that transparency internally, provide that transparency to regulators where required, um, and efficiently manage uh, manage financial volatility and risk. So I want to take this full circle then. So, I mean, it sounds like we've talked a lot about how recent market volunteer volatility and other trends are affecting uh, a the necessity for an insurer to innovate. We've talked a lot about the correlation of innovation and prof profitability. So I'm going to turn back to you, Matteo, and say, you know, do you see innovative digital technology as a critical role in managing uh, everything we've talked about so far? Do you think that technology vendors like FIS uh, helping insurers solve these sorts of problems uh, with our variety of digital solutions and different operating models, you know, is a key part of this? So let me uh, start uh, um, reconnecting with one of the last comments of Thomas. Mm -hmm. Thomas, highlighted uh, how uh, technology helped uh, on some specific processes uh, to do better the job. So I try to uh, rationalize this uh, from a strategic level uh, to answer your question. Um, I believe that uh, data and technology 
are a key enabler for achieving the strategic goal of an insurer. I published a book in 2018 that uh, had this title. All the insurance players will be insured tech, meaning organization where technology and data will prevail as a key enabler of a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, the examples uh, from the two papers I mentioned uh, at the beginning of our discussion uh, are a demonstration that uh, this thesis that uh, five years ago uh, was uh, pretty exotic, uh, now has uh, a robust backup. So a company as your is uh, a precious enabler for the innovation journey of uh, an insurer. Insurers need uh, reliable tech models uh, in order to move uh, along their journey, to do step by step uh, uh, a transformation of the business. Because we are talking about uh, the usage of uh, innovation uh, to transform the business. Not, uh, we are not talking about uh, a shining toy used uh, for a press release uh, or uh, presented on the stage of a conference. So I want to talk a little specifically um, here, and I think I'll ask this of both of you, so maybe we'll start with you, Thomas, is I want to talk a little bit about reliability versus innovation. Um, in the context of these cutting edge technologies, do you think that insurers need most reliability or innovation? I'll start with you, Thomas. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting point, right? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure they are really mutually exclusive. It's reliability or innovation, right? I think in my mind, innovation drives predictability, mm -hmm. drives reliability, right? So I view if I if I look at the value that we bring to to our insurance customers, right? We help insurance customers in their treasury space to reliably you know, forecast their foreign currency cash flows, to reliably you know, manage their you know their their treasury books uh, that may be hatching some some other financial instruments. Uh, you know, out there, they, they uh, enter into as part of their, uh, you know, uh, insurance business. So the way I would really kind of phrase it here is I think innovation, innovation drives the adoption of technology. The adoption of technology is the base, a cornerstone of uh, providing uh, a re reliable or give, equipping an organization uh, with the ability to deliver reliable financial results, reliable business interactions with their customers. Matteo, would you agree? Um, you know, do you think there is a different priority set or do you agree with that comment around innovation driving reliability? How do you see it? Uh, let's say I agree that uh, there is not a conflict between uh, innovation and reliability, but I will focus uh, on the, re in my answer, on the reliability of the inputs uh, more than on the outputs. Uh, so I believe uh, that uh, insurers uh, will integrate uh, inside their core processes only reliable technologies. So uh, I think that uh, reliability is necessary to work uh, in the insurance sector. It's a must. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, I think we're coming up on time. So I'd like to start with you, Thomas. And do you have any final uh, parting thoughts or words that you'd like to say about, you know, everything we've gone over today? Uh, look, I'll, I'll try to sort of distill <laughs> the key themes here for me as, as, as we close up, right? So, you know, look, we started, uh, to me, actually, the whole conversation sort of revolves around innovation. Right. Uh, and I'm almost kind of going back to what uh, Matteo said in the beginning. Right. Uh, you know, creating that DNA of innovation in an organization. To me, innovation and DNA, that is strategic. 
right? And this is what drives the behavior across the organization. And, um, you know, we at FIS or the, the business uh, treasury and payments that, that I'm responsible for, right? Uh, we, we provide that technology to help insurance organizations um, adapt to innovation, adapt to uh, changing market uh, circumstances, whether this is on a macroeconomic level, whether this is financial markets volatility, and therefore I would say are, are a, a critical part of, uh, you know, of, 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 of being a partner to organizations with the corresponding uh, innovation culture. I feel there's, in particular in the insurance space, there's probably a lot more we can do in terms of mm. driving the culture of innovation, driving the DNA. But look, you know, we are, we, we are there ready to, to, to be out there and, and, and assist our partners, assist our customers um, navigating through, uh, through this, uh, this uh, macro and my, uh, macroeconomic and financial market scenarios. Elaborating on uh, what you just said, I totally agree on the culture. I will pay a little more attention when I talk with insurers to mention the DNA, because I think that uh, innovation is really a matter of culture. It's something that can be built. I will avoid to tell them uh, that is DNA because someone can feel that uh, I don't have it in my DNA, so I should not innovate. I, be, I believe that any organization with the right people, the Uh, right commitment from their sea level can have the ambition to become a master in innovation. It will take longer for some companies, uh, but uh, I don't think that someone should feel excluded from this journey. Thank you guys so much. I really enjoyed both having, you know, both of these experts Uh, perspectives to discuss everything we got the chance to cover today, some very insightful comments, and I really appreciated the conversation. And I'd like to thank all the listeners for tuning in as well. I hope everyone was able to learn something today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.